I'm, uh, I'm going to talk about a, a topic that, that really is a, a very controversial one. Uh, if you've been reading about this in, in the papers and in Time Magazine even recently, it's uh, God versus Darwin. And I've talked about this in a lot of different venues. This is the first time I've done it in an arena. And, and I, I've been told that the, the scoreboard is going to be, as we're, as we're going along in the talk, giving the Darwin score and the God score. So uh, you'll be able to keep track of who's winning as we go along. Uh, uh, but really, I, that's, that's not the way that I'm going to do this, and, and I hope that as we go along you'll see that the stereotypical way in which this uh, controversy gets presented as uh, a battle between science versus religion uh, really uh, misstates uh, the way in which uh, uh, things really happen. Uh, there is a sense in which this is creationism versus, uh, versus evolution, uh, but it's not really something about science against religion, and I hope that as we go along you'll, you'll, you'll get a sense of why that's so. So I'm going to start by, by just talking about the trial, uh, and this is something that I'm sure you might have, have read something about because it was very widely covered, as you'll see here, just some of the, uh, the media sources that, that uh, had articles, uh, newspaper, uh, magazine, uh, TV, from the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal all the way down to uh, Rolling Stone and, and People magazine. So this was something that was very broadly uh, covered uh, nationally and internationally, a, 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 of great interest for a, a lot of different reasons. Uh, here's the, yours truly, uh, as uh, I'm walking to the court. Uh, this is the third day of the trial. Uh, the, the, the lead lawyer uh, for the plaintiffs, uh, Eric Rothschild, is, is there next to me. Uh, next to him is Tammy Kitzmiller. She was the, the lead plaintiff of, of the 11 parents that sued the district. Uh, this is the walk from the law office to the courtroom. They call it the perp walk. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the one time, of course, when uh, the, the cameras are allowed to, to film people, and they, they said, you know, walk slowly enough because the cameramen are going to be running backwards. Uh, and that's, of course, the way in which this, this happens. Once you're in court, uh, things are much more, um, uh, much more sedate. Um, so this was, this was a, a trial that really, for the first time, put in... Uh, to uh, the legal decision-making process, um, the status of intelligent design creationism. And this was a, a trial that, that really the intelligent design group had been looking for for many, many years since they had, uh, had gotten the movement together. It was really aimed at, at having a test case. Uh, and they were very, very uh, confident uh, about uh, the fact that they thought they would win in court. Let me just give you a few examples of this. This is a, a quote from William Dembski, one of the leaders of the intelligent design movement, several years before there was a, a, a court case. He says, I'll wager a bottle of single malt scotch should it ever go to trial whether ID may legitimately be taught in public school science curricula that ID will pass all constitutional hurdles. So, I mean, really even pretty cocky about this. Um, he put together... Uh, a, a white paper for the, uh, the attorneys that were defending the school district, defending intelligent design there, um, and he called it the vice strategy, and here's a picture from the, the document. Uh, this was to brief the lawyers on how they were to, to challenge the expert witnesses, and you'll notice that he, he uh, visualized this with a, a vice crushing the heads of his opponents. Uh, on his website uh, months before, he had this picture of, of a little Darwin doll with his head in the vice. Uh, and again, the, the idea here was, you know, we will, we will crush them in this, in this circumstance. They'll be on the stand. Um, they'll have to answer the questions uh, and um, will uh, we'll prevail in this case. Um, even after the trial um, got started, the, the view from the intelligent design group was, was really very... Um, um, positive with regard to the judge who had been picked. Uh, and here's something from one of the intelligent design web blogs in Common Descent um, where they're talking about the judge, Judge Jones. He's a good old boy brought up through the conservative ranks. So they were happy with his choice. The, the judge gets picked really by a computer at random, so we, no one knew who was going to be picked, but they were very happy with this choice. They talk about the fact that he was an assistant scoutmaster, uh, so that counted as something. Uh, a buddy of, of Governor Tom Ridge, and more than that, appointed by GW himself. So they really took this as, as being someone with impeccable uh, conservative credentials. Um, mentioned how uh, George W. Bush had himself 
uh, come out just the previous year in favor of uh, intelligent design. Um, mentioned how, how um, he was a, a friend of, of uh, others who, who supported this as well, and, and say um, he's not going to go against his political allies here. Right? He's one of us, uh, and clearly this is, a, this is a win for us. Now, they expected a win, and they said the ACLU is obviously going to appeal, so this won't be over uh, until it goes to the Supreme Court. You see in the, the bottom line there, it says, but now we own that too. Uh, so they were very, uh, very uh, sure about, uh, about this. But what happened in the case? Uh, what was the final decision? Not quite what, uh, what was expected. Here's the headline when the decision was announced. Uh, breathtaking inanity uh, was the quote from the uh, official opinion of the court. Um, the federal judge minces no words as he comes down against uh, evolution's rival. Uh, here you have a picture of, of Tammy Kitzmiller and uh, Christy Ream, another one of the, the parents, uh, giving each other a low five in, in, in response when they heard the verdict. Uh, here are a couple of, of quotes from the judge's decision. Intelligent design uh, says the, the court is a religious alternative masquerading as a scientific theory. Uh, more than that, um, intelligent design is creationism relabeled. And then the legal decision that teaching it in the public schools is unconstitutional. That's the, um, the ultimate uh, resolution, the legal resolution here. Now, what was it that, uh, that the, the judge uh, said about this in general? He says, uh, ID aspires to change the ground rules of science uh, to make room for religion, specifically beliefs consonant with a particular version of Christianity. So these are the elements of the... Uh, of the legal aspect of the case that I'm going to talk about in, in, in part. So one of it is the, the nature of, of science here, that uh, it's changing the ground rules of science. It's not science, it, it violates that. Uh, and more than that, it's religion, and not just any religion. Uh, it's a very particular, it's a sectarian, narrow form of religion. Uh, and of course, the Constitution not allowing the establishment of religion or preferentially um, um, giving benefit to one religion over another uh, wouldn't allow any of these things. And that's what leads to the unconstitutionality. So that's the, the end of the story in terms of, of how things worked out. Uh, and as you might imagine, the intelligent design group was not quite as happy uh, with the decision uh, and with the judge as they were originally. So here's someone from the, the intelligent design group, John West from the Discovery Institute, uh, opining about the opinion and the judge afterwards, he says, Judge Jones got in his soapbox to offer his own views of science, religion, and evolution. He makes it clear that he wants his place in history as the judge who issued a definitive decision about intelligent design. This is an activist judge who has delusions of grandeur. Uh, and it's interesting that Judge Jones, in his opinion itself, had predicted that people who objected to this would call him an activist judge. I mean, this has become such a common uh, term of, of abuse. Uh, and he specifically said, I will be called this, but this is resolutely not an activist court. So he anticipated this objection. So that was, that was uh, quoted uh, from uh, the Intelligent Design Group in, in a lot of the papers. But there was a lot more. On the websites, they objected to this as well. So here's from uh, one of the ID websites. They called his view the Grinch opinion. It, it was issued December 20th, so around Christmas time. Um, the picture of the Grinch, it says, a recent interpretive illustration of Judge John E. Jones III. So they, they thought of him as the Grinch who, sold, who stole Christmas. Uh, here's a, an article from the way uh, Phyllis Shafley uh, described it. She said he was a false judge who made a mockery of this case. Judge John Jones uh, III could still be chairman of the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board if millions of evangelical Christians had not pulled the lever for George W. Bush in 2000. Yet. This federal judge who owes his position entirely to those voters and the president who appointed him 